sin that nailed you to the cross. It was the same sin that you forgave us of. And God, I pray that we're just overwhelmed with your love tonight. God, that you'll teach us how to love you more. Teach us how to love like you love us. God, we're so thankful. We pray these things in your name. Amen. If you're having a seat, can we give God a hand tonight?
they gave me the senior superlative of this. You want to know what it was? Best hair. Best hair. That is good hair. That should have happened. Should have happened. Maybe the hairiest, not the best hair, maybe the hairiest. Alright? Some of you are like, that's so gross. I'm just stating facts, okay? I love my hair, alright? But there it is. Class flirt. You guys see Greg Brady up there? Have any of y'all seen the Brady Brunch? Y'all too young for that? Do I look like Greg Brady or what? Class flirt. How many of you can see that in me? People who know me. Some of y'all like, who's Bridget? She's married, all right? She married. But they gave me class flirt. How many of y'all think I'm proud of that? Dang. I can tell you guys this tonight, I'm not proud of it. And I'm gonna explain why. I will, okay? Class flirt is not a good thing. It's not, not a good thing. I actually flirted with Bridget too, so that's kind of funny where the class flirts flirt with you. But I got class flirt. The reason why I'm not proud of being the class flirt was because that means that I broke a lot of girls' hearts. Some of y'all, hey, listen. Some of y'all are like, you mean they broke your heart? But being the class flirt, flirting with people is not a good thing. Because that means you want to flirt with them, but that means you don't want to be in a relationship with them. Does that make sense? Yeah? And you want to know why maybe from middle school to high school I was in some short dating relationships that didn't last very long. It's probably because I was a flirt. And tonight, I want to tell you guys when it comes to our new series, Dating Me, that we should never take dating lightly because people's hearts are at stake. We should never take dating lightly because people's hearts are at stake. Never should. Never should. No way. Do y'all realize that? Fellas, do you realize that? Don't be a flirt because girls' hearts are at stake. And one of the biggest things that I realized, if you can't be satisfied single, there's definitely no way you can be satisfied taken. If you can't be satisfied single, there's no way you can be satisfied taken. No way. No way. So you want to know what it was, I was trying to find my satisfaction in girls, and I wasn't satisfied in Christ. Therefore, I was trying to find my satisfaction in a girl. Therefore, I kept flirting with girls. And I'm not with any girl that I dated in middle school or high school. Do y'all realize that? Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know that story, though. See, we're like, yeah. Yeah, no clue that Chrissy didn't go to the same high school as me, at the same middle school. But no, if you cannot be satisfied being single, you cannot be satisfied taking it. You just can't. If you're not happy single, I'm going to explain why. If you're not, if you can't be happy single, there's definitely no way you can be happy taking No way. See, I realize this, right? When you want to date somebody... Is basically one center dating another center. Y'all realize that? You think it's going to make it easier? You think it's going to make it harder? <clears throat> it's going to make it a little harder, right? Y'all know that? So ask yourself tonight. I want you to answer. Are you satisfied single? Some of you are like, no, I'm in a relationship. 
But let me ask you this. Are you satisfied in Christ? Are you satisfied singing? Because I'm going to tell you guys this. The greatest temptation in singleness, greatest temptation, is to assume dating is going to meet your unmet needs. Because some of y'all have unmet needs and you think being in a relationship is going to meet those needs when you have to understand your greatest need is Jesus. And he's the only one who can meet all those unmet needs. But the greatest temptation is for us to believe the lie that us being in a relationship, that okay, that's going to allow us to finally fill those unmet needs. Tonight, I want you guys to walk away with this one statement. You're going to walk away with it here in a little bit at the end. It'll make more sense. But I want you all to walk away with this statement. I'm about to jump into the text. Once Jesus satisfies me, then I can think about dating. I'm going to unpack that statement. I didn't say you could start, because if you're asking me, parents would probably agree with this, some might not. I don't think you should date when you're in middle school, which is my opinion. But once Jesus satisfies me, then I can think about dating. Does Jesus satisfy you tonight? You gotta raise your hand. Ask yourself, does Jesus satisfy you tonight? Because I'm about to talk about a woman in the Bible who she was not satisfied completely in Jesus. Therefore, she was trying to find it in guy after guy after guy. She was not satisfied being single. <coughs> not satisfied. If everybody was talking me to John chapter 4, go to John 4. Any Johns in the house? Cool. John. It's a great name. John chapter 4. Like I said, if you don't have a Bible, make sure you stop by the gray room. Get a Bible on us absolutely free. If you're like, man, I use my cell phone 24-7. Download the Bible app. Follow along with us. Please don't be on Snapchat. Don't be on Instagram. The last guy last Wednesday got struck by lightning. <laughs> See, I don't know if I'm being serious or not. And he could have got struck by lightning on the way home. Y'all don't know that either. John chapter 4, <coughs> verse 5. Y'all follow along with me tonight. This is what it says. So Jesus came to a town in Samaria called Sychar. I'll say Sychar. It's a pretty cool name. Maybe we'll name our next kid Sychar. Just kidding. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired as he was. I gotta sit down, sorry. And Jesus tired. As he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. It was about noon. Okay? Know this. Noon is the hottest part of the day. Would you guys agree with that? All right. So Jesus is sitting at this well, this aquafina, not fina. He's going to illustrate my well tonight. Okay? So it's about noon. He's sitting at this well. He's tired. He's sitting by a well, so he probably wants a what? He probably wants what? Okay, I had to have you guys say it because I say it really well. No pun intended. Y'all ready? Verse 7. This is what it says. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water. <laughs> I'm going to have to say H2O, right? Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? This is mind-blowing for three different reasons. Jesus is talking to a woman, A. He's talking to a Samaritan, and he's asking her for a drink, which can make him unceremonially unclean because he's about to take a drink. 
from the jar that this woman is about to give to you. He's doing three different things that most people don't do. He's associating with someone who most people wouldn't associate with. Don't you love that Jesus associates with people that most people try to avoid? Don't y'all love that? But Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? I tell, tell you guys the biggest thing that Jesus wants from you tonight is he wants your heart. The biggest thing that Jesus wants from you tonight is your heart. You can't be satisfied in Christ until he has all of you. Until you've surrendered your whole life to Jesus. You cannot be satisfied in Christ. And there's no way that you should even think about dating. Because Jesus is the solid rock. He's the firm foundation that's going to allow your relationship to ever last. You must be satisfied in Christ because a house divided against itself cannot stand. If your girl is pursuing the world and you're pursuing Jesus, it's going to be a tug of war and it's never going to work. The biggest thing that Jesus wants you to give him tonight is your heart. Have you given him your heart? Because you know what you guys try to do? You try to give your heart to somebody else before you've given your heart to Jesus. No work. You gotta give your heart to Jesus before you can even begin to try to give your heart to somebody else. It's not gonna work in the dating relationship. It's not. It's not. It goes on to say this. Disciples are gonna get food. Jesus is chilling. Get something to drink. Verse nine, it says, a Samaritan woman said to him, you are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews did not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asked you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living H2O. Or water. This woman did not realize who she was talking to. Because she wanted something that was temporary, but Jesus wanted to give her something that was eternal. He wanted to give her what? What type of H2O? Living H2O. Living H2O. Jesus wants to give you living H2O. How essential is water? Very Extremely, right? Extremely essential. H2O is necessary for life, just like our salvation is. H2O refreshes and satisfies us, just like Jesus does. He wants to give this woman who had come to the well... He wanted to give her something that would last for forever, that would satisfy her. And the biggest thing that some of you guys are here tonight, we're in a dating series, but the biggest thing tonight is some of you keep going somewhere, the well, whatever you want to call it. You keep going there and you keep trying to look for things that are going to satisfy you and they keep leaving you empty. They're not leaving you full, they keep leaving you empty. They're leaving you empty. They're not leaving you full. They keep leaving you empty. See, Jesus is the only one that says, I have come that you might have life and life to the fullest. Life to the full. Life more abundantly. Everything else in this life will leave us empty. She kept being empty. Empty. What are you seeking tonight that keeps leaving you empty? It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be you're seeking a relationship and you're trying to find your fulfillment in that relationship and it keeps leaving you empty. And like I said, Jesus has to satisfy you first. Jesus has to satisfy you first. See, some of y'all think that marriage is essential for life. You think that marriage is absolutely necessary for your life. And can I tell you guys, this is not actually necessary for your life if God doesn't allow it to happen. You want to know how I know that? Because let me ask you this. Was Jesus married? 
Let me ask you this. Was Paul married? How many of you guys know someone who's single? The biggest thing I can tell you tonight is there's nothing wrong with being single. Because if there was something wrong with being single, then there was something wrong with Jesus and there was something wrong with Paul. That there's nothing wrong with being single. And some of y'all think tonight that you have to be in a relationship or you're a nobody or you're weird. Some of y'all think that. Like, you ain't got a boyfriend? You ain't got a girlfriend? What's going on? It's not absolutely necessary. If God allows it to happen as you're pursuing him, girls, as you're waiting on the right guy who loves Jesus, then so be it. But it's not absolutely necessary for your life. This is how she responds in verse 11. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? You have anything to draw with? You didn't bring a bucket? Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as he did also for his sons and his flocks and his herds? Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. If you keep trying to find satisfaction in a relationship, it's going to leave you thirsty again. Even in my own marriage, in my own life, I cannot rely on Chrissy's joy. I can't rely on her to always make me happy because she's not always going to make me happy. There's only one person who's always going to allow me to be the happiest in life and the most joyful in life, and that's going to come from Jesus. Jesus needs to be your satisfaction. Just like Jesus needs to be the satisfaction in Chrissy's life. That's the only way it works. I can't try and make her Jesus because she's not. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her this. Check this out. Go call your husband and come back. And she replies by this. I have no husband, she replied. And what you can write on the outside of your page is a liar, because check this out. <clears throat> Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, you have had five husbands. Ooh. Dang, dog. He went straight to the heart, didn't he? Straight to the heart. The fact is, you have had five husbands, and the man you have now is not your husband, so she had five husbands. She's with the guy now who's not her husband. That makes six. We have just said is quite true. Had five husbands. Now she's with a guy, six guy. But guess who's coming along? Guess who's meeting her at the well? Jesus, right? Jesus. Jesus, where is, she trying, where is she trying to find her satisfaction? Where is she trying to find it? And a guy, right? First guy, couldn't find satisfaction. Second guy, couldn't find satisfaction. Third guy, couldn't find satisfaction. Fourth guy, couldn't find satisfaction. Fifth guy, couldn't find satisfaction. The sixth guy, Jesus calls her out on, couldn't find satisfaction. But here comes Jesus. Middle school and high school. Don't just date to date. Because if you try to just date to date, you're just going to break a girl's heart, guys. If you go into a dating relationship with no purpose, you're just going to break the girl's heart. You want to know how I got a class flirt? Because I just dated a girl and I had no purpose and intention in it. I was like, hey, she looks good. Let's date. You know what happened? I broke her heart. Some are like, no, you didn't. You look ugly. You're ugly. I seen the pictures. <laughs> Six guy. Six guy. Six guy. Jesus comes. 
verse 25, the woman said, I know that Messiah called Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared. He didn't just say it. He declares it. He proclaims it. He shouts it loudly. This is what he says. I who speak to you am he. I am that guy that you need in your life. The only one who's going to satisfy you. I am that seventh person in your life. The completion part of your life. Because what we try to do is we try to believe the lie. Girls, that a guy can complete you and a guy can never complete you. There's only one person who could ever complete you and his name is Jesus. Guys, no girl could ever complete you. Only Jesus can complete you. Seven, the number of completion. She finally found the seventh guy who could complete her life, who could satisfy her life, that she could walk away never thirsty again, that she could have eternal life. She found Jesus. Once Jesus satisfies me, then I can think about dating. We should never think ever about dating unless Jesus has completely satisfied our life. Because you guys will see the stats of divorce. You guys will see the stats of people breaking up. You want to know the only way, the foundation that is secure, is when two people are satisfied with Jesus. Satisfied with Jesus. I don't mean just Jesus is a part of their life. I mean they're completely satisfied in Jesus. <clears throat> Will any dating relationship ever work? Once you, if you're not satisfied single, if you're not satisfied in Jesus right now, you can't be satisfied taken. Are you satisfied in Jesus tonight? Because one day it's going to end up just like you and this woman, just like Jesus and this woman. End up in the end. It's just going to be you and Jesus. Are you satisfied in Jesus? Only Jesus can complete you. Because you know what we try to do? We try to do this. We try and take one piece of our heart and another piece of our heart. And we try to give it, with, give it to somebody else. When only Jesus can complete us, we try to say, hey, like, you take a piece of my heart. You take the other one. It don't work. Because only Jesus can complete us. Only Jesus can. I had an opportunity Tuesday to meet with my discipleship group guys. As I sat down on my jacket that I was wearing, I had a sticker. And Adam pointed out to me that I had a sticker on my, my jacket. And the sticker said, be mine. A Valentine's Day sticker. You want to know how I got there? Because of Brooklyn, my little daughter. Like to play with stickers. Got on me. But God kind of spoke to me during that because his message has been going in my head. Be mine. The biggest person who wants you to be mine, who's calling out and saying, be mine tonight, is Jesus himself. Once you satisfied in Jesus, are you satisfied in Jesus? There's nobody else in this world that will satisfy you but Jesus. I say it all the time. The only person who can satisfy the human heart is the one who made it. The only person who can satisfy the human heart is the one who made it. But some of you are trying to find satisfaction in a relationship and you're never going to find it. You must be satisfied in Jesus first before you even think about David. And guys, do not ever try to date without the pure heart and right motives. Don't just date to date. People's lives are at stake. People's hearts are at stake. Where are you drawing from? What well are you drawing from? You keep going to a well that's going to leave you dry, that's going to leave you empty. Are you seeking something else tonight other than Jesus? He's the only one that's never going to leave you thirsty again. Never going to leave you thirsty again. Let Jesus satisfy you tonight. Don't let him just be a part of your life. Let him be everything in your life tonight.
before you even think about dating. <clears throat> think about dating. Let's pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you came by yourself. Maybe you came because that a girl's hot. Maybe you came because a girl invited you. Girls, maybe you came that a guy looked good. A guy invited you. But tonight you realize that you're not satisfied in Christ. That Jesus has not completed you. You had no clue how deep the Father's love was for you. That he would give his only son. That he would pay the price for every single one of your sins. You had no clue. And tonight he wants a relationship with you. The biggest thing he wants you to give him is your heart. Your everything. Your complete surrender. And tonight you do not have a relationship with Jesus. You do not know him. That's you tonight. I just want to pray for you. That's you. You know, slip your hand right up. So right back down. I just want to pray for you. If you're here tonight, you say, Noah, uh, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I just need someone to pray for me. Anybody tonight? Don't want to miss anybody. Anybody tonight? Maybe you're here tonight and you'd say, Hey, I'm trying to find my satisfaction. I think I need to be in a relationship. But I know maybe I shouldn't be in a relationship or I know I don't necessarily need a relationship. And I just want Jesus to be my everything. Like I don't necessarily need a guy or a girl in my life. But I just need Jesus to be my complete satisfaction. I just need someone to pray for me tonight. If that's you, I just want you to slip your hand up. So right back down. I see hands all over. And all across. I see him. see him. God, tonight pray for these students. I pray most of all that they would run to you. God, that you would satisfy them. God, because they've encountered you tonight. God, from your word, through worship. God, and I pray that they would seek you for satisfaction, for fulfillment in life, for joy, for peace. God, because we're all looking for love. We all want to be loved. And there's only one person who's truly given everything and shown us complete love. And that was you when you gave your only son for us. And you paid our ransom, you paid our debt on the cross. And until we know your love, we can never love anybody else. So God, tonight I pray these students would find their satisfaction in you. Maybe they're already in a relationship. God, I pray that they would find their satisfaction in you. God, that you begin to prepare them now for somebody later. God, we love you. Now I say as I pray. Amen. Tonight, there is water bottles that are up here. I don't want you guys to never forget. I want you to put it on your dresser. That don't take dating lightly. Some of you just want to jump into a relationship like I jumped into a relationship when I was in middle school or high school. And you don't have to date. You can be good friends with people. You can go on group outings with people. And you can get to know someone on a friendship level that soon, maybe one day, can turn into a dating relationship. But don't just date today. But I want you to know the number one person who's going to be able to satisfy you, who's going to be able to give you water, who will never thirst again, who's going to give you eternal life, is going to be Jesus. So I want you to take one of these water bottles with you home. And remember, once Jesus satisfies me, then I can think about dating. Go home and your mom will say, absolutely no way. Praise God. But maybe you go home. Your parents are like, all right, you're finally 18. You can date now. All right? But I want you guys to seriously remember before you even think about dating, make sure Jesus is everything to you and he has satisfied you. You have given him every piece of you. Because no guy can satisfy you, girls. No girl can satisfy you guys. 
so that you think, as we sing tonight, how deep the Father's love was for us. But that's how much He loves you and cares about you and wants to be your satisfaction. And as you sing tonight, I want to encourage you to come up and grab one of these. But tonight, I'm going to be standing by the great room. Maybe you need someone to pray with. Maybe you're here tonight and you need to give your life to Christ. I'll be back by the great room. There's leaders all across this room. But may I invite you to stand tonight and sing. I'll be in the back. You do as the Lord leads you to do. But this I know is 
John chapter 4, verse 26, then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Jesus is our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our everything. He did the greatest thing he ever could do for us. He shed his own blood for us on the cross. Because he wants you to give him your heart, your everything. He wants you to be satisfied in him. No other person in this world can satisfy you. Only Jesus can. Nothing in this world can satisfy you but Jesus and him alone. So tonight, may you remember that. It's okay to be single. It's okay to be single. We're talking on the seat.